Habib Nurmagomedov is a Russian former MMA fighter. He was the longest reigning UFC lightweight champion ever, having held the title from April 2018 to March 2021. With 29 wins and no losses, he retired with an undefeated record. This is no ordinary feat. It takes a certain caliber of man to achieve this and today I'm going to be exploring some of the reasons why he is one of the greatest role models for men today. It would be criminal not to accredit part of his success to his father. He is a man he is heavily due to the the parenting and teachings of his father. Habib was born on the 20th of September in the village of Sildi in Dagestan. His father converted the ground floor of their two-story building into a gym since he dedicated his life to coaching the youth in Dagestan. This is when Habib took an interest in martial arts as he would watch students training at the gym. Habib's training as a child included wrestling a bear when he was just nine years old. He frequently got into street fights in his youth before focusing his attention on mixed martial arts. His dad made him work very very hard and there were times when Habib didn't understand the reason but now he is grateful for his father's guidance. When he was a teenager, he wanted to get a job because he felt embarrassed for asking his dad for money, but his dad told him to focus on his training rather than money. Habib's father's methods may seem extreme or even erroneous, but this was a massive factor in molding and shaping Habib. He is one of a kind, so it behoves that his upbringing was also one of a kind. The discipline and morals his dad instilled in him have transcended into all fronts of Habib's life, which I will get into further. When Dustin Try, try to choke me, like, and uh, I'm like thinking, like, Dustin is like crazy guy. He think I'm gonna tap in front of my father. He was very straight, very disciplined, very disciplined. And he don't really don't care your son, your nephew, your student. For him, inside the gym, where, or inside the like training camp, everybody was same. You know, he don't really care. If someone make mistake, go out. You know. And uh, and very good heart, like big heart, you know, very good views, you know, how he watched the life. You can see the reverence he holds for his dad. You can also see that they have such a strong bond. In fact, one of Habib's message for teenagers today is the importance of parents, how much they sacrifice for you and to listen to them, despite how hard it feels at the time, which is a value that barely anyone else preaches in the modern world. Respect your parents. Be your parents very close, this is very important. Parents everything, you know, your mother, your father. And that's it. And everything in your life is gonna be good. If you're gonna listen to your parents, mother, father, you know, be very close with them, you know. And that's it, I think. Other things, everything is calm, you know, because your parents are gonna teach you what you have to do. His bond with his father was so strong that he promised his mother that he would discontinue the sport once his father died. And sadly, that day would come on the 3rd of July 2020. At the age of 57, Habib is now completely retired from the sport. Despite being offered $100 million to fight again, his promise to his mother came above this. Habib is a devout Muslim. I wanna say Alhamdulillah, God give me everything. Alhamdulillah. And his dad and religion are a big proponent for the discipline, respect and faith that has carried Habib through his life. These values are what sets him apart from all other fighters and men. It seems like Habib is on another level to the common man. His discipline is unparalleled. He prays five times a day, does not drink or smoke and is always at the gym. Now, most fighters are disciplined in this way, but there is something more to Habib. Even Joe Rogan said that there was something more than technique to Habib's success. It goes deeper than that having a rigid schedule like that and having extreme discipline and having a real purpose like when you're doing this to pray to god and you have these five prayers that you do during the day like it keeps you on the path yeah it i mean those guys this, it, there's something to whatever khabib's doing that's not just technique it's not just that they have great technique it's not just that they're tough guys there's also this d devout sort of uh, ideology that they've ascribed to that they that they live their life by they're they're so devout in their religious beliefs that they have so much confidence it's almost like that's all taken care of like they can just concentrate on on what they do yeah like that all you know god has a plan for everything you don't have to like have this existential angst that a lot of people roll around through life with there is something spiritual about it. And this could be because the values Islam imparts are in itself symbiotic with the values that would elevate the superficial values of any sport, such as praying five times a day, respecting elders, 
and putting family first. Where's the post-fight celebration? They never celebrate. I, what? Why not? I know. You gotta understand, these guys are Muslim through and through, 100%. They are the most loyal, most loving, most respectful fighters I've ever met in my whole entire life. Habib's been with me for 10 years. Not one time has he ever really disrespected me. None of those guys have ever disrespected me. Their culture, the way they are as a person and how they treat their elders, second to none. Habib's a superstar. There's a giant limousine out front. The front seat is for the premier person. Habib's and I are really going, who do you think is gonna go in the front every single time without no question it's me because i'm the elder now when it was his father and i we already knew who was going to be in the front seat father one of the times oh, i go to his room and he's got this beautiful room and, and i see a cot on the side habib where are you sleeping right here coach and i go but they gave me this giant suite he goes yeah yeah shamil my big brother he's in that one and there i look at there's shamil it's wow. a nice beautiful suite shamil habib's in the, the roller blade. Why? Because that's his elder. Nobody I know does that, but they do because they are who they are, 100% devoted to their religion. You can tell from this clip that Habib's humbleness comes from his upbringing and religious values. The other thing that sets him apart is his mindset. Habib said himself that it's not about attaining anything for him. In fact, he is already a champion in his head, but more so carrying out his purpose. He's essentially saying that hard work and discipline is second nature to him and as ordinary as breathing. He has talked about his dedication to the gym and and he simply needs to go every day or it just doesn't feel right. Even if he's injured, he would go just to watch other fighters and learn. He lives and breathes this sport, which is why his discipline is above anyone else. This spiritual allure and humbleness is what allowed him to defeat Conor McGregor. Not only that, but without losing any integrity at all. On Friday the 3rd of August 2018, the UFC announced that Habib would make his first defense of his lightweight title against Conor McGregor on October the 6th in Las Vegas. This was the most anticipated fight in Habib's career. In the lead up to the fight, Conor took shots at his religion, wife and ethnicity. Despite how personal Conor got, Habib's control of his emotions was unwavering. He never once stooped to his level and braved all the comments to preserve the integrity of the sport. The media a little bit change MMA. This is respect sport, you know. This is not trash talking sport. This is respect. So like I told you before, guys, I want to change this game. I don't want people talk shit about like opponents, talk shit about his father, like like religion. You, you cannot talk about religion. You cannot talk about nation. You know, guys, you cannot talk about this stuff. And you know, this is for me is very important. This is only possible from a formidable source of self-confidence and morality. And to no surprise, he defeated Connor in the fourth round via submission. This is a true testament to his character and shows that these values transcend all aspects of his life, not just fighting. The ability to control emotions is what famous martial artist Bruce Lee talked about too. He said, if you give in to your emotion, you lose yourself. You must be one with your emotion because the body always follows the mind. Habib is also very fearless about his opinions. In 2018, he advocated a crackdown on nightclubs in his home region of Dagestan and leveled criticism at a rap concert held there. In 2019, Habib spoke out against a play held in Dagestan that featured a scene of a provocative woman seducing a man. He described the play as filth and recommended that there be a governmental investigation into its production. He also criticised the importance of ring girls in the sport and what it represented. He received a lot of backlash for this, but this did not impede on him since he gives utmost priority to his morals. He's trying to save Dagestan and the future generations from the clutches of degeneracy, which is why he is such an inspiring role model. But what sets him apart from other role models? Habib's most distinct and most crucial trait that everyone should look up to is his detachment from the material world. Most people nowadays brand masculinity as a means to an end or to lure men in with concepts of women, money, status and other things in guise of biology. But it's quite apparent that these ideas are ego fulfilling. Habib is not stuck in this cognitive dissonance and is beyond them. He's content with little and is not motivated by money or any worldly desires. Of course, even he was chasing it at one point, just like any other human being. But then something made him look within for a deeper meaning and purpose. I can live, I can live for myself. I can do whatever I want in the world. I can buy any house in the world. But this is don't give me good energy. This is like, this is not who I am. This is not what my father teach me, you know. And I'm very happy about this. Because like, I remember like 10 years ago, my mind was completely different. Oh, I'm gonna become champion, I'm gonna become rich, I'm gonna buy everything. But ev like everything what happened last two years, uh, this has changed my mind and uh, changed uh, the way how I was thinking.
you know, it was 3rd July 2020, two years ago, almost two years ago. After a couple years, it's going to be two years, father is not with me. You know, it's very hard time right now staying here and talk, talk, talk about him. You know, it's very emotional for me. But, and, uh, the death of his father catalyzed the question of what's really important when it comes down to it. This is known as memento mori, the realization of the inevitability of death. This allowed Habib to gain clarity on real transcendental values rather than the hedonistic treadmill of the common man. If you made it this far into the video, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something useful and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this.